We begin with a picture of addiction now getting attention around the world. When Nora Sheehan's son Andrew died from a drug overdose, she shared pictures of him in the morgue. We're about to show you those photos that some may find upsetting, but Andrew's grieving mother says that is exactly the point. A family friend captured the moment Nora identified her 29 year old son in a funeral home in Maryland. Andrew died in October after overdosing on a combination of painkillers, including fentanyl. Nora says she wants people to see the reality of addiction. Joining me now is Andrew's mom, Nora Sheehan. Nora and her husband, Jeffrey, live in Rehoboth Beach. Thanks so much for being here. And Thank you for having story. me. All right, yeah. so before we get to the pictures, tell us about Andrew. Andrew was um, very annoying. As a child. As a child, yeah. he got into everything. Uh, his favorite, well, I don't know if it was his favorite saying, but he would always come to us and say, I made a poor decision. And that meant he did something that probably was going to get him in trouble later. <laughs> <laughs> but a joy to have around. He was. He was. He was. He was. For as annoying as he was, he was so very loving to everyone. Now, we know he died of an overdose. So mm -hmm. how did this start? How did he get hooked? Originally, this started back around, I want to say, 2010. He apparently um, started on Oxycontin, and it was something that we'd, we'd found out later that he was breaking into cars and homes down you know, in our area. Mm. And uh, actually, just the other day, I was reading some of the police reports, and they had, he and another boy had admitted to the police at that time that they were hooked on um, narcotic drugs. And, and I know that you tried to get him into detox. You tried to get him into rehab. I mean, this was years. It was constant battle, yeah. There were, um, at one point, we sent him to, like, a behavioral health center. Um, and then later, right before his death, that's when we took him to detox. His sisters basically went and kidnapped him from the woods from where he was living. Mm. And how did you find out that Andrew died? in October? I, well, the first thing that happened was one of my daughters, Haley, received a text from somebody that she didn't know, but someone had reached out on Facebook and just sent a message and said, hey, you know, have you heard about Drew? They found him in the woods behind Royal Farms in Elkton. My daughter Haley just happened to be in Elkton that day. It was a Sunday. So I asked her if she would please go to the police station and, you know, show them a picture, show them tattoos, whatever. They came back and they said, we think it might be your brother. You shared a photo, photos of you saying a final goodbye to him. Um, why did you feel like you wanted to make that drastic a step? Because that picture has been seen by thousands of people all over the world. It's been seen all over the world. You know, I think the biggest reason is, for me, that was the picture of this opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so many people, I don't think, I don't whether we turn a blind eye or, I think the old uh, saying that six degrees of separation, it's down to like one. Everybody now either has someone in their family or they, know someone or they know someone that has someone in their family there's it, it's it's just it's tightened up so much now that and I didn't want to hide it Andrew came clean to me uh, I wasn't ashamed of him and you know to this day I just I want people to see what this is doing to families because we just can't brush it under the carpet anymore I know your best friend took that picture, mm -hmm. uh, several pictures of you. Did you know at that time what you were going to do with them? No, I had no idea. No idea. The only reason, you know, I asked her to take pictures was because that's just something in my family that, you know, we it sounds morbid, but we've always had a picture of, you know, the deceased, my parents when they passed away, you know, I have pictures of them, but it was also because I knew at that time when I went into the crematorium, I would be thinking about so much stuff mm -hmm. that I wouldn't be able to focus on things. And I wanted a, a memory for later was really why I took, you know, had her take the picture. 
as we mentioned, you've been hearing from people from around the world. What kind of reaction the, are you getting I to this? I have, it's, it's all Something been you don't positive. See. No, oh, okay. no, it's, um, and I didn't even know. I, it, it just started, it got out there. And people from the, the first, I think, farthest away response that I got was from someone in Argentina. And they, they basically just tracked me down on Facebook and they're like, you don't know me, but this is the biggest news right now that we're seeing. Wow. in our country and I was just floored I mean it, it unbelievable everywhere from Israel to Argentina to the UK it, it un, just unreal what do you hope will be the results of this what do you want people to know to do I think my biggest hope is that people just open their eyes mm -hmm. and you know I hate to be another one of those people that is politically correct these days because there's so much of that going on but I just want to pe I want people to find that the word junkie is offensive I mean sadly you hear so many people say well they're just junkies let them die well this junkie was my son and it wasn't something that he wanted to do he wanted to be clean he you know he didn't want to live the way he was mm -hmm. living anymore but it was just so much more powerful than him. So I just want there to be an awareness that this is what's happening to our children and the people we love. And we can see how much you love him in that moment, in that one picture. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I, I, I'm still, I'm angry at him, not because of what he did, but because he left me. Mm. Um, if, if I, you know, the one thing that I regret is that I didn't pull the covers back that day and paint his toenails because that would have been my final thing to him. You know, that was something that, that we, we did lots of times. I, I tormented about, him a lot, yeah. but yeah, yeah. And I've got to ask you really quickly about your tattoo on yes. your arm. I don't know if we can see that. Um, but. Yeah, my tattoo is um, from some letters that Andrew had written me while he was incarcerated. I love you so much. I will yeah. see you soon. Love your little boy, your son. son, Andrew. Yeah. And you wear it every day. I carry it with me every day. Every I, day. I carry him here too, and he's in pink, so that's my. <laughs> <laughs> Nora, thank you so much for thank being you. here and sharing with us your story. We really appreciate it.